bit of stealthy shooting. I was kind of in behind some bushes and stuff. And you can just about make out the stump over there with the moss on it. And there's a like a yellow dot on it there. Um, that's what I'm going to be trying to aim for anyway. But I'm shooting through bushes, so I don't know. I might get deflections off my arrow. We shall have to see. Right, let's go for it. Let's zoom out a little bit. Oops. Sorry, folks. Improvised camera stand again. Don't know why I'm whispering. There we go. Right, let's go. to shoot over branches which is tricky. Right, oh, oh about I don't know a centimetre two centimetres just above the yellow. Close. Oh, hey, guess who? Um, just having a break in uh, shooting. Um, I'll show you the last shot when I edit the video. Um, you remember I missed uh, one of my three? The first one? Can't remember. First or the second. And uh, it went past the stump. Well, very foolishly, um, I was using arrows without Zwicky Judo tips on. Those three, because they've been um, air shaft tested, and I know they're flown right. Uh, unfortunately, the ones with my Twitty Judo points on uh, are not so good. Um, so I've just spent a good five minutes rooting around underneath all the moss, trying to find my arrow that missed the stump. So while I'm chatting to you guys, um, I'm just going to swap the points over. Um, yeah, right, today, um, I'm getting a lot of uh, inquiries and questions um, on the online groups um, regarding my twin fletching, um, so I thought I'd do a little video, because um, I've answered so many people with the same questions and the same answers, I thought I'd get a video out there and then everybody will know. Uh, why have I done it? Right. Because uh, I'm weird? No. Well, could come into it. Um, I was watching YouTube one day, as you do, and um, I came across this guy. Uh, he goes by the name of Lampy100. Um, I'll see if I can get the uh, the link up down below in the description. Um, he's got lots of stuff on YouTube. Uh, he's recently migrated to uh, Vimeo or Vimeo, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Um, well worth checking out. Um, to watch him doing aerial archery is it's just well, it's poetry in motion. Um, if I was half as good as he is, I'd be a very happy man. Um, but yeah, check him out. Um, and somebody else, I can't remember who it was, up to said to me, Kev, have you seen he's using twin fletching? So I went back into one of his videos, and sure enough, he's using this setup. So thought, okay, I know I'm not as good as Archer as him, but uh, I'll give the setup a go. And um, initially I did one arrow, 
and I, I was just going to go out for 10 minutes and see what it was like. Anyway, about an hour and a half later, I think it was, I came back in, and it took me that long, not because I was trying to prove it worked, but I was trying to prove it didn't. Because I went out, um, and my first shots were like, hello, uh, that hit the spot. I thought, nah, nah, it's just, you know, sometimes it goes like that, you know. So I thought, well, I'll try something else. I tried short distances, long distances, uphill, downhill, into the sun, away from the sun, any configuration you could think of. Um, and I couldn't get it not working, if, if you follow my logic. So I came in after an hour, an hour and a half, and uh, thought, right, rip the fletchings off another two arrows, and uh, do the job properly. And I think I was out there a good half a day, just messing around on my field at home. Um, really, really pleased. Oh, got to put the other points on. Really, really pleased with the results. Um, and I've kind of stuck with it. And um, all of my arrows now. Excuse me, dipping out a shot. If I am, bear with me. I'll retrieve these points. Um, yeah, all of my arrows are now on twin fletching. Uh, it works for me. It works for my setup. And as I've said to numerous people so far, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work. For them and their setup, um, but you know, what's to be lost by giving it a go and trying it? That was my logic. Um, I've had another few questions that keep cropping up. How do they fly? How do they compare to uh, the standard triple fletching? Um, the short answer is they seem to fly faster and with a flatter trajectory. You can almost say the word trajectory. Um, now, to my way of thinking, a flatter trajectory equals better accuracy. Um, if you've got a huge, great parabolic arc like this, getting into the big words now, huge, great parabolic arc, your margin for error is minimal. You have to absolutely be bang on to hit the target bang on. If it's flatter, you've got a bit more margin for error. It's not as critical. It's still critical, yes. Um, but, yeah, long story short, I find it more accurate because they fly fat, faster and flatter. Um, and there's another couple of advantages as well. Um, you'll see when I pack these up in just a moment. In fact, hey, let's do it. Camera's rolling. with a, just an elastic band around it. Shove that in there. Look up, look at how much room those take up. Look how close the knocks are. Basically the shafts are right next to each other. You, you cannot do that with triple fletching. So for, um, for carrying and storage, just it, it can't be beaten. It's like there's no fletchings on there at all. Um, and that can just go in my rucksack, sit to one side, and takes up no room at all. Um, for you survivalist types out there, bushcrafters and what have you, uh, guys don't get any better than that. Um, quite a practical solution. Um, and another advantage, it doesn't matter whether I knock it that way around, or that way around, because the feathers are exactly the same. So if you're in uh, low light conditions where it's difficult to see, um, nighttime shooting especially, I do a fair bit of nighttime shooting this time of year. Uh, if you haven't tried it, try it out. No light at all other than on the target. So basically, when you're fumbling around like this, you cannot tell easily which way round your cock feather would be. But with this setup it doesn't matter. As long as it's knocked you know it's going to be right. Um, and again in tactical or stealthy situations for um, hunting especially if you're trying to stay quiet keep your eye on the prey 
make sure it doesn't move. Just feel. All you've got to do is make sure it sits properly on the string, up to the knock, and you're good to go. Okay, so that's why I'm using twin fletching. Be adventurous, give it a try. Uh, oh, before I sign off on the subject, there's an advantage stroke disadvantage with it as well. It shows up mistakes in your shooting form, especially string talking. If you've twisted the string, they tend to fly corkscrew like that. They still hit, but it just looks really scruffy in flight. So, in a way, it's a good thing because it tells you if you if your form is is right or not. Um, also, you, your release has got to be. It doesn't got to be bang on, but it, it if you get a bad release again, you end up with that kind of thing. The, the tip seems to stay still, but it's the back end that waggles its tail like that. Okay, I'll do a bit more shooting, and uh, we'll catch you guys later next time in the forest. Adios. Right, let's see if we can answer the question about how these actually fly the aerodynamics on these uh, twin fletched arrows. Sorry, out of breath. It's quite hilly here. Anyway, I've got the camera set up on quite a tall stump and uh, I'm going to be shooting downhill so I'm hoping if I kneel and shoot in front of the camera you'll be actually be able to see the arrows in flight and this is the target I've picked there. It's like a, a log laid down at the base of that tree. Just going across there, look, just laid down horizontally uh, about I don't know, somewhere 40 metres, maybe a bit less, 35 maybe even. Uh, no, more than 35, doesn't matter. Um, so I've got nice bright yellow fletchings on there. Thank you, dry flight. Let's see if you can uh, see these things in action. Right, let's go down here. Come a bit close to the side. Hopefully you'll be able to see. Yo! Bang on. Still clipped the branch halfway down. Oh, there we go. Right, let's see if we got that on film. Alright, that seems to have come up okay on the film. Um, I'll see if I've got this editing software to be able to slow it down. Not sure, we'll see. Right, let's walk down. See all these low bits of bare bush here. That's what these horrible things. That's what me first one was clattering off. Hey, oh, I'll settle for that, considering one of those hit the uh, branches, and as you can see, they're all nice and straight. Yeah, it's definitely that bottom one hit the branch, skewed it slightly, but they fly really nice. Okay, guys, over and out, that's me done for the day.